So um, I decided to split the presentation in, in two parts. In the first part, I will briefly explain you what is Science Cloud, what, why we decided to build Science Cloud, Science Cloud, and why you might need to use Science Cloud. And in the second, in the second part, I will just uh, show you how the system is. So because at the beginning it might look a bit abstract of what the cloud system is. So with this uh, short demo, you, you will probably have a little bit of uh, a better overview and better understanding of how, how the system is and how you might want to use it. To start with is uh, why, we, why did we build Science Cloud? Science Cloud is part of a, a, of a set of, of uh, research infrastructures and part of the strategy of uh, research infrastructures within uh, S380. To be more precise, we have uh, high, com high performance computing infrastructure. Uh, this one is uh, at CSCS in Lugano, and this is mostly for uh, highly parallel, highly parallel jobs. Then we have cluster computing, which is again batch systems, again a batch system uh, cluster, but it's, ho it's hosted within the University of Zurich, and it's for it uh, enables, for example, um, the infrastructure behold, uh, behind the uh, cluster computing. We have a the virtual campus is uh, for, for example, jobs which require high high memory or uh, I mean, which are not so demanding in uh, in parallel computation. And then the, the, the last the last two uh, entries are the server computing and the research uh, data storage. It is there where Science Cloud uh, comes to play a role. Uh, in particular, with server computing, we mean that on Science Cloud. Uh, users could have um, infrastructure and computing power on demand. By this we mean that whenever you need a computation or, or whenever your laptop is not enough for what you are doing, you can just log, on, log in on Science Cloud and start the server of the size you would like to have and then execute whatever you think and whatever you want to do and you're not, you're not able to do on your local laptop or on your local infrastructure. The same is for, for storage. Uh, on Science Cloud, we, provo we provide with the capability of uh, allocating storage uh, of almost the size you would like to have, and copy your data, copy your research data on that storage, and use it to have your data nearby the compute power. So Science Cloud uh, combines storage and compute, and your data is nearby the compute, so you can perform whatever you need, whatever computation you need on your data, already on the Science Cloud. So to summarize, uh, Science Cloud uh, is we use um, we use uh, Science Cloud and offer Science Cloud to store, access the data later on, the research data, and process for what you need. Uh, so what uh, have been dri uh, driving us into building Science Cloud? It's first of all is the self provisioning because we would like to have the users being able to uh, have their own infrastructure and deal with their own infrastructure as they like. So with Science Cloud, you become kind of independent, mostly independent from uh, administrators because you're an administrator of, of your infrastructure. And it also is elastic, in, uh, which means that uh, whenever you need more computation, you can just allocate more. And you can afterwards, when you're done, you can just shrink or you just you can just resize what you have been allocated. Uh, we build Science Cloud in a way that it's uh, scalable. By this, we mean that the infrastructure is built in a way that we can easily ex because, as you can imagine, it's even if it's uh, a cloud system and people could think that it's kind of unlimited, it has a, it has its limitation by the hardware which is running the system. So when, whenever it's needed, we have the possibility to extend, to extend pretty much the, uh, the, the size of the system to, in order to meet new requests, in order to be able to provide with the capacity that might, might have been required for, uh, from, the, from the scientists. Additionally, the, the system, we try to build a reliable and available system. By this, I mean that the underneath storage, we have uh, the storage which is running on Science Cloud, which is replicated. We have three, all the data which is stored on the Science Cloud is replicated three times. 
So it's not a backup, but we have kind of a way to, re if one of the replicas goes down or is not available, we are able to recover, we will be able to recover the data. Uh, here is the, uh, the point to emphasize that it's uh, not for permanent, uh, Science Cloud is not um, built for storing your data permanently. It's just thought to have your data for the time you need it, for, for the time you need it for, uh, to be processed and computed. So once you have the results or everything you need from, from your code, you sh you're supposed to copy your, uh, the data back. So it's not for permanent storing storage of data, and not, not either for, for backing up the data. Uh, so why would you care, why would you need to have access to, to Science Cloud? We, I summarized a few scenarios, <coughs> most common scenarios we have. The first one is, for example, that uh, uh, how can I run this data ana analysis on 1,000 cores since my laptop is too slow? So let's, let's, let's say that you validated your code and you're sure that it's behaving as it's supposed to behave, but then you have to scale. And, but most of the time, when you scale, you cannot really do it on your laptop. You would need a bigger infrastructure where you, have to, where you can do it. And on top of this, you probably have some deadline for a publication which depends on, this, uh, on, this, on, this, on the results, and this is most probably by the end of the month. It's usually a good case. <laughs> next next uh, scenario is where I can put 100 terabytes of, da of data that I need to analyze. Because as you can imagine, locally it's difficult to have the storage, the storing capacity that you might need for the, the raw data or even for the results. And as well, in this case, you probably have deadlines which are by the end of the month to, to fly to fit. Uh, then it comes to automation, because as you can imagine, once you have your, as I said, your code validated, you might need to submit more than 1,000, 10,000 billions of jobs. And it's not really doable doing this by hand, because you cannot manage all the submissions just manually. So we also provide a way on Science Cloud to automate the process of job submission of your specific application. And on top of this, we also provide uh, porting, uh, porting of your application to Science Cloud. So whenever you have a code or something, we could sit with you and make it possible that whatever you are having or you're developing is able to fit and run on Science Cloud. If you have questions, just please interrupt. As I mentioned, as I just mentioned, it's uh, Science Cloud is not an isolated uh, service. Uh, S3AT provides the services I mentioned before on top of Science Cloud. So we will help you to analyze your uh, use case. We'll engineer the solution and bring it to Science Cloud. And for this purpose, we we have we are developing two tools. One of them is called G Sixty Five, which will programmatically interact with the cloud. And do all the all the tasks of uh, of starting the virtual machines, copying your data on the virtual machines, and bringing the results back, without you to have without the need to have an interaction with the, with the system. An elastic cluster, elastic cluster is just a tool that enables you to create batch systems on the cloud. So let's say you need a, a traditional batch uh, Slurm cluster on the cloud. With the elastic cluster tool, you can just run a command, and within your project, we will see in a while what the project is, you will have an up and running uh, HPC, not HPC, but high throughput, let's say, batch system, which you can already use. And yeah, so as I mentioned, we provide also on top of this, on Science Cloud, a way to interact easily and to scale the system. Uh, now, the brief demo, so that you can see how the system looks like. Uh, it's just here. So this is the, the login page for the system. You usually log in with your short name and web pass. But before this, we have to ask for an uh, account. It's not like it's granted for all the 
all the, all the members of the university. So I just click in. Uh, I will use the project for training, because, which is the one that we usually use for the training <coughs> sessions of science. As well, the first time, so you know, whenever you are part or whenever you have an account on Science Cloud, you will be associated with a project. A project uh, uh, within Science Cloud is uh, it's usually associated to a research group and to a professor. So let's say you're part of a research group. You will probably have an account on science. We will, you will have an account on the, on the science cloud, which is associated to, to this particular research group. So you will have all the members of your, you will be sharing the project within science cloud with all the members of your research group. And this, usually it will be, it will be written here. And as you can see, I, since I'm administrating some of the, some of the projects of Science Cloud are part of different projects. And they will usually start with the, with the last name of the professor and then the institute and usually ends with uh, ZH. So the first time you log in, you will see the overview page. The overview page will indicate uh, the resources you have available and you, ha you can use on the cloud. In this particular case, you can see that uh, within the training project, we can we can uh, we can start up to 500 virtual instances. And this is the amount of virtual CPUs for, because uh, a virtual instance is uh, a virtual computer on the cloud. The, the instance itself can have different amount of uh, CPUs, cores, and this is uh, in this case you can see here that. Within these 400 instances, they, uh, you can allocate up to 600 virtual CPUs. We will see later when I start an instance how this is related. And then you have also the summary of the RAM, how much RAM those instances have. And another, other two interesting uh, options are those for the volumes and uh, volume storage. Volumes is the additional storage you can have attached to the to a, to a running instance. And you can think of a volume as a USB key of, of the size you want. So once you start an instance on Science Cloud, you can just decide to, you can see that the space which is on the instance is not what you want, it's not enough. So you can just start and you can attach a volume to the instance in order to provide as much space as you want to copy your data or, or whatever. So, uh, I can start an instance now, so you can see how it works. I go to instances, and you see that there, is, there are no, currently there are no instances running. I go to, maybe before this, I can, no, I, I can show you this before going to start an instance. So, an image, what is an image? Uh, an image is, so it, in, in, on this tab here, you have all the images, and the images are uh, is the shop you have on Science Cloud. An image is associated to an operating system. So let's say you would like to have there. I mean, on Linux you have different distributions, and uh, within this shop you can choose with which distribution of Linux you would like your your new instance to start. Uh, we also provide, as you can see, we also provide instances and images that have already MATLAB installed. <coughs> which would mean that once you start your, your virtual machine, you will have MATLAB already in place installed, binded with the license server, so you can already start using the software. Uh, so I go back to instances. As I said, it's, it's, there, there are no instances available now. I go to uh, launch instance. I will be printed with uh, like fields that I have to fill in in order to, to provide enough information for, to the system to go on. I will just call it test. Then uh, you can also specify down here the number of instances you would like to start once. Uh, I will keep it one, make it simple. Then I go here and here I can select and choose which 
I image from the from the list I showed you before. I would like to start. Let's go with the MATLAB one. Uh, snapshot here. I can just simply select the MATLAB. Let's go with Ubuntu MATLAB on Ubuntu 14.04. It's it's allocated. See here you can see that it's selected. Then I go to next. Here is where you choose the size of the system. And this within OpenStack, within the science lab, they are called flavors. A flavor is how big you would like to have your system. You, you can see that you have different types of, of flavors. Uh, for example, this one, which is the one that I'm going to use, have the instance you will start have um, has only one CPU, four gigabyte of RAM, and is of the type HPC, which means that you can run, you can run heavily heavy computations on this instance. So I go with this one, go to the next, uh, networks, I mean usually instances uh, by default are accessible only within the university network, or you have to use, if you would like to access them from outside, you have to use the VPN. To access them. So I, I just go by default with the user page only. Network ports is not something we need, security as well. Key pairs, this is a bit more, uh, it's more complicated, but uh, this is the way you, uh, how you enable yourself to access the, because you cannot, how you enable yourself to access the, the instance. And this is done with public and private keys. Uh, I will just go on with this because it's a bit more uh, advanced. And at this point, I should be set, so I can already click on launch instance. And if we are lucky, you see that it's scheduling now. It's spawning, starting. Can I ask? Do you advise people on what they should use in terms? Because everyone, of course, can go for the best uh, setting, kind of you know, most kick of RAM and, and all this kind of stuff. So or how do you? Let's say you have like a limit within the quota. Okay. So, so and you usually know the people which are within your project. Mm -hmm. So you, in most of the cases, you are supposed to also kind of agree and have. A okay, so it's more the more the part of the research group to how yes. they distribute within their code. Exactly. Okay, I see. Okay. So we've been given with an IP which is accessible from the from the university. So I should be able to now access this. So we are on it. So we just started it, and you can already log in to instance, use MATLAB to whatever you are you're thinking is more comfortable, you're planning to do. Uh, okay, what next? Ah, volumes. Volumes, as I mentioned before, volumes is additional storage you can have on the cloud. Uh, as you see, there are no volumes now available on, uh, within this particular project, and you can create with this the volume, just select uh, and test. the size, you can decide the size, uh, decide the size of the volume and just create it. Okay, you see now it has been created but it's not associated to any instance. Now you can what we can do is just attach this volume to the instance we just created. Manage attachments, select an instance, and then attach volume. And you can see here it's attached to test, which is my instance, I started. And it should be visible like device slash dev slash DVD. If I go here, So this is the, 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 the root volume, which is the one where operating system is, is sitting. It's usually the size is 100 gigabyte. And here is the new one, 
the one that we have just attached, and you see that the size here is one. So what you can do is just format, mount the volume, and just use it as a normal uh, as a normal disk space. This is important because uh, whenever you start an instance and you delete it, terminate the instance, all the data which is on the root file uh, file system will be gone, will be deleted. So it's this the, the root file system is not persistent. If you would like to have persistency on, on data, you should create a volume, copy whatever you need, and store it within this within the volume. Because once you detach, once you remove the volume from the instance, from, from an instance, you can attach it to a new one and use the data you have been using uh, previously. Uh, so I think this is for the because I'm also working a lot of time. This is for the uh, for, for the demo. Uh, just wanted to mention that um, I briefly summarized what we are usually doing within the demo. I briefly uh, summarized what we are usually usually doing in two hours. We are using that in uh, we are we are doing uh, regular trainings on Science Cloud, and we cover all the topics. For, from having the project, the overview of the project, starting an instance, creating the key pairs, uh, attaching the volume, formatting everything, copying the data on the instance. We do it in two hour trainings every every month. And we also are available for, for ad hoc trainings. If you have a large enough group within, within your institute which is interested in using Science Cloud, we can also come to your institute and do the basics of how, how to interact with the system. And if you have any any requests or suggestions, we can you can always uh, use our help at s3t.uzh.ch email for asking support or for asking us to, to have some start training or to subscribe. And I think that, that's it. If you have any questions, please go. Yeah. I have two questions, uh, three actually. Uh, first of all, do you have GPU computing on the Sans Cloud? On the Sans Cloud, no. Will we have a local we, we have a local system, which which is uh, a batch batch cluster. With uh, this one has the, the, the GPUs. Yes. Batch cluster meaning that I would have to submit jobs to it. So I would not be able to administrate a no, system which no, has access no. to GPU yes, computing. Yes, exactly. And if this won't be the case in the future either. What do you mean? Like, will you at some point have GPU computing? For it's not in the roadmap. Machines? At least for Science Cloud. It's, sorry, what? it's not in the roadmap to have GPUs within Science Cloud. Yeah. Um, this... Okay, well, cool. I can change. I mean, is there any request for Yes, as well. Yeah, if, if there are enough requests, we can change. We, we would really like them, but I mean, we're not the only ones. Uh, the other question was I received some emails about the fact that like the service used to be free will we start uh, have to start paying for it at any time in the future because you emailed me something and then you didn't follow up on that it's uh, yes let's say that so far this, uh, there was no charging model mm -hmm. now there is something that I mean there will be a cost contribution for using science cloud but it will be it's heavily subsidized from the university and it will be, I mean, um, not even comparable to what you could have using external cloud providers, let's put it in that way. Okay. But I can, I don't have more details on prices. Okay. So but currently we still don't have to pay for our usage now? No, as long as there is no agreement with the okay. professor with for your project, there is no fee. For okay. the and the last question was, since I'm also, like, and I guess many people who are doing research also develop software, mm -hmm. it's also important for them to have like administrative access to the machine, yeah, which is why the virtual machines make yeah. so much sense. What's the best way to scale the use on such a virtual machine so that it's kept minimal over time? Because currently, I like start a machine which has all of the cores and memory I need to process my data. Mm -hmm. But since parts of the data processing aren't feasible to test with like just a subset of the data, especially if you do like higher order analysis, mm -hmm. I need to run it on that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I need access to this machine. How would I like streamline it down when I don't need all of this power? Is it possible to scale? The resources while the machine is running, 
or is it possible to just shut it off via the button in the interface and then I don't officially use the resources anymore? Yeah, so the interface provides an option which is called shelve it. So mm -hmm. you can just take your instance and shelve it. Okay. And it will uh, release the resources allocated. Okay. And whenever you need it back again, you can just shelve it and it will be back as it was before. Okay. But while it's on, I cannot vary the no. button. No. I think it's a great thing to have to have a central hub for computation. It doesn't make sense that every lab has their own resources. Do you have a similar plans for backup systems? Because that's a similar problem that everyone is affected by and everyone fiddles around with their own private solutions. Kind of. Is there anything in, in the pipeline? No, for backing up. <coughs> there is this, the central backup uh, solution which centrally is providing. So the team will 